Shalom Aleichem guys, how are you doing? Today we're gonna try to bring down a deep understanding for us all to have more opportunities to connect ourselves to the light of Hashem with joy. Many people know how to suffer while uh, learning Torah and while keeping Torah and mitzvot. Um, but we're trying to see how to bring down real wisdom that will make us also happy while doing the best we can, serving the Creator with love. So, uh, okay. Torah Peitet. Peitet is um, 89 in the Kutai Moran. Post it on the thing? Yeah, we can do it. Right. So we're posting the, um, the Torah, Peitet 89, on the comments, um, on the Facebook so live. The... So Torah Peitet, Rabbeinu is saying, Vat chasreu me'at me'elokim, v'chavod v'hadar te'atreu. The Creator, He reduced, when He created the person, when He created the man, he reduced a little bit from its godliness and 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 then made the man so the person is almost the completion of god just with a certain lacking that the creator took out from him but chasreu me'at melokim only a small portion we lack of from being complete and perfect like God. A person is going all day long with a negative feeling of his lackings. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't do that. I'm worthless. I'm hopeless. But it's the total opposite of what it goes on. It's true that there are some things that you're not capable of doing. There are some things that you are lack of. And Rabbi Nachman of Westlev is saying that those are five things only five things that in those five things we're not like not like god but in all the rest of the things we're similar to him exactly perfectly like him and after the creator took out those few things from the person from the man so then he gave him honor and glory so he took those five things and he moved the camera. And after he moved the camera, no, I'm sorry. After he took those five things, so then he honored the person and crowned him with glory because he wanted the person not to feel that lacking. So even though that the person went down from his earlier level that he was in the level of God because before of creation there was only God there was nothing except of him and when the creator made the person he had to make a certain difference or else they will be one if there are two things that they are one they are one if they are similar completely they're one you don't have two things in creation that are totally the same. It cannot be, or else they would be one. It's a rule in physics. If you have two things that are perfectly the same, they're one. So when God wanted to create a human being, a creation that will enjoy his kindness and his mercy 
and will be able to enjoy all the bounty that the Creator is about to influence and give, he had to constrict him somehow. He had to take something from him that they won't be the same. So after he took those five certain things from him, he respected him and crowned him with honor and glory that he won't be ashamed of his lackings. But, but that means that, so we're different from God because if you just said that two things that are that are the same are one, but we're not the same. So that means we're different. The only difference is that he took something away from us. There is one thing or two things or five things that in those five things were not the same, but all the rest of the things were totally the same. What are those so five like things? we're like God. We're not, we're not God, we're like God. He blocked certain angles in our, let's call it personality, in the nature of our being, in our existence, for us not to be similar to Him. Because if we would be similar to Him, we wouldn't be able to enjoy His bounty, because we will be the bounty itself. When God was one before time, when God before the creation was infinity itself, there was no one to enjoy His love. There was no one to enjoy His grace. Only when He made us to be in a certain need, to put us in a place that we will need Him, that we will desire the thing we lack, only then the creation was complete. Before of that, we didn't have no lacking. We didn't lack anything. So He had to block some of the aspects of our lives for us to be able to enjoy the beauty and the grace of His loving kindness. So, Rabenu is saying, Hineyadua, it's a known thing. Those five things that we are different from Hashem are things that if we will pay attention to them, we're going to understand that it's very logic, that it's normal, that it's like, it's, it's okay that we won't have them. For an example, that the Creator, He can know things bef ahead of time. For an example, He knows what will be before it happened. This is something that we don't know. We, human beings, we don't know how things can happen, how will they happen before they did. But yeah, He but, does. But then I, um, I, I read somewhere, or I, I studied somewhere, where it said that there is a world where all is known. And that means that there is nothing that can happen that hasn't already been scheduled to happen. But not in our eyes. It's true. Right. In the eyes of Hashem. Hashem, He knows all the mysteries. He knows it all. He's over there. And from that point of view, from His perspective, He can see everything was, is, will, happened. Everything He knows. But so, so, so we are limited in that aspect of our creation. So it, why would you create something... And then, and then just to already know what's going to happen, and okay, what's, the, what's the whole purpose of that? This question is showing that your lack of that thing that we just described, because you're now expressing the lack of understanding of what that He made by yeah. making us who we are. Because, because He already knows what's going to happen. No, because He also gave us the free choice. This is a crazy thing. This is so one of like the hardest things. it's like an interactive... Things. Path. We don't. Uh, we cannot understand it. We just need to believe that it exists. That you have two things that are taking place in the same time. One is the fact that it's all known. That Hashem he knows everything, and Hashem knows what happened and what will happen, and He knows it all. This is one thing. And in the same time that we know it, we should believe also that we have a free choice to change our destiny, and that we can choose differently. And then we can go elsewhere and to create reality. And you cannot understand, you cannot grasp those two things in the same time because they contradict each other. But you should believe in that. And that's also one of the qualities of Hashem that He has and we don't. Another one of His huge um, um, abilities that He blocked from us is that He has that ability to know few things in in one uh, in one time, like to understand few things 
in the same time, like that when we were in the time of Matan Torah, when we received the Torah, so Hashem told us two things about Shabbat. He said, Shamor, and He said, Zachor. You should keep and you should remember. But when He said that, those two things being said at once, at the same time. In one time, two things being said. And it was not two different voices. There was one voice, the voice of heaven, that came down to earth and said two things in the same time. This is something impossible for us to understand. We experienced it and we felt it and we heard it in the time of Matan Torah. But in reality, today you cannot understand how can it be that in the same time I will tell you, stay and go. Right. And you're going to hear both. It cannot be. But God can do that because He's above space, He's above time, He's above all the physical creation. When He sent us down to earth and dressed us with physical body and in all the rest of the nature of our creation, He put us into that shape. By that, He blocked us from those five um, abilities of His that are above time and, and space. So Rabbeinu is saying, it's a known thing, that everything that a person lack of, if it's spiritual and if it's physical, that lacking is a lacking in the Shechina itself, in the Spirit of God, that it's an aspect of God, and not in the man himself. Like you feel, oh, wow, I'm stuck, I don't have money, oh, my... My friend does not talk to me. Oh, I, I don't have a car right now. You feel a lacking in your life. Rabbeinu is telling you it's a known thing that all the things you lack of, spiritually and physically, are not your own lackings. They are godly lackings. They are so lackings you know, in the Shechina is, itself. Yeah, but what's... Sh can you first explain the difference between Shechina and God? Because and God? they try to yes. say it's like a female and male. It it. The, it is an aspect of female and male, but again, in the root of creation, everything was one. Everything is one. Above all physicality, everything is one. There is one unity that everything includes in it. But when things started to be built, so they had to have some structure. So then duality started, and then all the rest of the... the of, of particles started to, to divide from that unity. Like that in human, we know that in the beginning, Hashem made the man, and he was one person. And after a while, he asked from Hashem to have a spouse, and the Creator divided him into two. He took out from his inside, his rib, and took it out of his physical body, and made another woman made out of him. And then they had children, so that two became four. And those four became eight. And those eight became 16. And 16 became 32. And that's how it, they multiplied. Also spiritually, the same structure. When the, crea when the Creator started the process, He was one. But then when he wanted to start putting his own light into creation, into shape, he had to divide it. And the main dividing was to create male form, male form, one that influences and one that receives. And this is how the Shechina comes into reality. In the root, a couple, they're one. You see pictures of uh, me and my wife. We look like two spoons lying on each other. <laughs> but when, when you have people that don't have shalom bayit, they, they don't have um, peace in their houses, so you see contradictions, you see controversials, you see arguments, you see differences. He wants to go, she doesn't want to go. He wants to do, she doesn't want to do. She wants to do different things. He refuses. They're arguing. Everyone go elsewhere. Why? Because there is no shechina between them. The Shekhinah is the glue, that's the spiritual glue of love that is attaching all creations to become one again. That's the feminine power. Like that a mother in the house, her potential and her job 
is to bring everyone together. She will make sure that the house will be pleasant. She will make sure that the food will be tasty. She will be um, on top of the relationships with ev between everyone and she will put her nose into everything and see if they're good, if everything's okay and you should talk to him and he should talk to you. She's coming and making peace all the time. That's a feminine quality. And she's coming and creating connection between the, 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 the divided ones. So the Shekhinah has the same power and energy that she is on top of creating peace on earth. So Rabbeinu is telling us that the lacking is in the Shekhinah, that it's the aspect of God. And this is why there is the lack, that when a person experiences a lacking, a, a pain, some kind of, of, of poverty, some kind of darkness. So Rabbeinu is revealing to us that in that verse you can understand how it happens because it's coming for sure from God. Means so, that the lacking is not yours. It's God. It's the lacking of God. Hold and on, because um, but that will give a lot of uh, leeway to people that are sinning and saying that it's not me, it's God. Like pretty much playing stupid. So first if somebody, of all. So First that's... of all, there is a lot of space on earth for stupid people. It's like it's a known <laughs> thing. Like but it's... you're saying it's la actual lackings, not lusts, not desires, and not stupidity. It's actual lackings. Yeah. Because, so for example... Because like we said, when God sent himself under the curtains of creation, the, the reality was that his light was blocked. And when the light is blocked, it's not shining as it was supposed to in the first place, as it was right. ideally. Right, so so that makes sense. And then, so so God, I understand, so God, so, so God, how does God, I mean, how can you, the first time that I've seen actual uh, text, ancient text, that stated what you said, that for many years you've been saying it, that God doesn't believe in himself, and all sorts of lackings was Yom Yahu, in, uh, I think it was Rosh Hashanah, right? So then in the prophet, it says that, um, w what did it say? You, not exactly, but do you remember just to sum it up? That Hashem himself, he regrets for all the destruction and he's like asking for, for an opportunity to, to rebuild. So that means we that... We need to open a space for his godliness to be revealed, to shine, to spark. And oh. that's in Yirmiyahu. Yeah. So, so, so that's amazing that, that now, because the majority of the world, they don't understand this concept that God is actually very, we're very similar to God. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> do you know what's going on in the world? People think that God is a, that God is a DJ. Like, what are you talking about? People make up stories, people make up fantasies, and everyone is claiming that God is what that he wants God to be. Everyone is claiming that God dressed himself in this and God dressed himself in that and everyone is making a different story and God gave the, the, the leadership of the world to this, to that, like Christians divided to so many sections and Muslims are divided to so many sections and Jewish people are divided to so many sections and you have so many different cultures and so-called religions and foreign faiths that everyone is claiming that God is a statue, and God is the animals, and God is the fire, and God is the water, like everyone, and God is as a human being, and like whatever, God is shapes, God is the cosmos, yeah. everyone makes a story, you can say that, that, that you're God, like whatever, every person can make up a story, it will never apply to the truth, unless you're gonna seek for the truth, and then the truth will reveal itself to you, so in reality, all the lackings that there are in the world are coming as a result of the creation itself. Now, God decided to create the world and he took the full responsibility on the consequences of it. And we're now part of this process of what that goes on in this world. And it's a process that must continue and show must go on. <laughs> So the lacking for sure is coming from God, from the Shekhinah Kedusha. But when the person will know that, when you're going to understand that the lacking is above and here on earth, 
when you're gonna understand that the lacking is not only your lacking oh i'm broke oh i'm tired oh i'm lack of whatever when you're gonna understand that you're gonna understand that the lacking is coming from above when you're gonna understand that Rabbeinu is saying for sure you're gonna fall to great sadness and you won't be able to serve Hashem with joy why 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 that you're gonna feel lacking if you're gonna understand that the horrible lackings that you're suffering from are starting over there in heaven because Rabbeinu he is very innocent and Rabbeinu thinks that everyone has a heart like his and probably every person that really serves Hashem really serves Hashem cares about Hashem not like all the silly religious people that are taking care of themselves and they choose oh I'm gonna be this I'm gonna do that and from now on I'm gonna be righteous I'm gonna be pure I'm gonna be holy and they're just feeding their own stomachs with so-called spiritual food but they are in the same place of having lust and desires just that they desire spiritual things so to speak yeah, and why am I saying themselves. why am I saying so to speak because th this is not real spirituality to go and to walk with tefillin on your head for four hours a day will not make you more spiritual than to put them five minutes a day it can be that a real righteous person will wear them for one minute and a real evil person will wear it 24 hours and will cross nights with tefillin. like it tefillin will not make you holy the intention of your heart will make you holy right so Rabbeinu is saying when a person will understand that the lacking starts over there in heaven for sure he will fall to huge sadness why because Rabbeinu assumes that we care about Hashem that if we're gonna think about it for a second that hey come on what's going on all the darkness that we're experiencing the Creator experienced the same like he's also suffering like that from all the abuse and from all the plagues and all the sicknesses and all the weaknesses and all the poverty and all the sadness and all the depression and all the anxieties and all the like all the wars and all the arguments and all the lies and all the scams and all the pain and all the loss and all the, the mournings and all the horrible things he experienced that as well Rabenu expects that when we will think about something like that so great so like so divine and painful we're gonna fall we're gonna crash because Rabenu assumes that we're innocent like him that our heart is so alive that when we're gonna think that Hashem is in such great pain we not like we won't be able to carry that pain and then Rabbeinu gives us the advice and therefore a person must answer himself to find an inner advice inside yourself who am I and what my life worth look at my reality the king chose me to tell me he's lacking Rabbeinu is opening your eyes to understand that everything that you experience in your life is a mirror, is a reflection of the godly supervision that the Creator is talking to you through your life occasions, through your life situations. That, Rabbein, that Rabbeinu is telling you that Hashem is telling you His inner secrets. That Hashem tells you, I have pains, I have sorrow, I have grief, I'm suffering, I have judgments. The Creator is revealing to you His condition, telling you His pain, telling you His heart. And now can you imagine to be more honored than to be the best friend of Hashem, that Hashem, the Creator, will tell you His heart? Is there something greater than that, that Hashem will tell you His heart, will open Himself to you and will reveal to you his lacking his own lacking from that the person will rise to huge happiness and all his brain will be renewed and that's why the, that's how it's written in the verse that Hashem the creator honored the man with honor and glory crowned him with honor and glory by that honor and glory that he has that the king himself is telling him his lackings that the king is sharing 
his, his pain and his sorrow with you, by that you are being crowned, 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 uh, crowned, crowned, bemochin chadashim with new brain, with new wisdom. So Rabbeinu basically tells us and gives us a fantastic advice that when you go through hell in your life, don't take it so personally. Just realize that Hashem is talking to you and telling you what needs to be fixed, what he's suffering from, that he's going through pain, that he's going through difficulties, and that we together, you and him, like I said many times in my classes, that the Orach Chaim HaKadosh, the righteous man, that his name was Rabbi Chaim Ben Atar, the Orach Chaim HaKadosh said that the man and the Creator are like brothers, they're partners, they're equal in the creation. The Creator sent humans down to earth as His messengers. He sent Himself dressed in people. He sent His Divine Spirit into people, into this creation, to come back to Him. So, so, he's, so Mashiach is also part of God, obviously? Mashiach is the most um, gentle and clean form of the soul of the first man, of Adam Arishon. And his main tikkun will be to fix what that he messed up in the Garden of Eden. He messed up with his wife in the Garden of Eden, and he will surely fix it in his own house with his wife and his children. Because he messed up big time in his shlom bait with his wife, because there were many things that he sinned and he was lack of. And then when the Creator came to show him his lacking, he rejected the rebuke and he put the blame on his wife. So as long as you put the blame on your wife, you are for sure not Mashiach. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you put the blame on your wife, you're for sure not Mashiach. You can, not, not, not only not Mashiach, but you're actually... You're actually Off track. You're, you're, I, I can say it because it's coming from my mouth. This is Chaim. So you're actually part of being uh, a loser. Because you're not doing what, what needs to be done and you're just shifting the focus of attention and blame. I will not say a loser, blame. but I will say you lose opportunities. You that's, lose. That's, but that's what a loser is. Okay, but a loser with, is somebody that's losing the, in life somehow. But without the, 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 the sense of criticism yeah. and the word loser. Well, I, some, well, we don't want to I'm, define. We want to understand what our condition is and to work on ourselves and to heal. But the, so, the issue okay, is that lost, men no. will always blame women they're always going to shift the, the focus of attention and blame they to were. others that's what they were doing but if now Chaim will take responsibility on his life and he's going to start working on that aspect of his life he will stop doing it with time it might take him a week or so but with uh, with that time and with that effort he will achieve the goals that he will set for himself Amen. as long as he's not giving up on emuna Okay, Baruch Hashem, we had a wonderful wow, session today. Yeah, We're going to cool. try to do that more often, Bezat Hashem, to learn from more books and wonderful things. There is much to say in, the, in this um, wonderful um, um, life. life, in this wonderful life. And Hashem is good to us all. Um, the Amuna project is on the go. So join us and share the videos and the wonderful content and help us to distribute the light of the Creator with the rest of your loved ones. And may the Creator bless us all together as one with a lot of happiness, joy, satisfaction from life and wisdom and sensitivity um, to our spouses and to our children, to all those who surround us, to know how to shine the light of truth and kindness to them, that they will succeed and climb on the right track with us as well. Amen. Can you add something? Thank you. Amen. Thank you all. The world does not exist. Because Olam Milchon Elev, the world is just blocking the light of truth. The world called Alma de Shikha, world of light, is just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. It's just a fake. We're just inside of an illusion. We're just inside of an illusion.